Hello friends, welcome. In this video, we are going to work with the logic to log in the user. So first, I'm going to open the backend project and make some changes there. Also create a user with a seeder and then work with the front end. So let's open my iTerm and I am inside the backend project. So Laravel React API. Let's open this with VS Code. And the first thing, if you go to the database, seeders here, I have uncomment this one. So app model user, factory create, test user, and with email test example.com. So we are going to create a test example.com user. And for that, let me just run here PHP artisan migrate fresh dash dash seed okay then we need to go inside the dot env file and here we need to change the front end url port here we have 3000 but with the uh, vid we have the 5173 port so let's change this and also we need to add the sanctum stateful domains to be localhost 5173 and the session domain to be localhost so now for the backend we are okay i'm going to close this close this also and let's run the php artisan serve okay now i'm going to open a new port and navigate in the react breeze api so first cd in the sites directory and then cd in the react dash breeze dash api and i'm going to open this with a vs code here and yeah oh Okay. Now the first thing is open the login because we are going to use the login and also I'm going to run uh, here npm run dev and let's open the project in the browser. So I'm going to copy this, open the browser and paste that in and also let's open the localhost uh, 8000 for the backend yeah inspect element go to the application cookies okay here we have the cookies and let me just zoom for you i'm going to zoom also this one and we are okay let's go to the login and yeah now let's make the logic for the login so in here first i'm going to import the use state and in here let's check if we can auto import so i'm going to create a constant and say an array destruct for email and set email is going to be equal with the use state yeah and we have imported the use state here we don't need to import the react so let's remove that use state and initially is going to be an empty string also let's create the constant for the password so let's say password and set password which is going to be equal with use state and initially an empty string then in the form here we are going to say type email and i'm going to add the value which is going to be email and on change event i'm going to say add the event and call the set email event dot target dot value okay and now let's do the same for the password 
So here we have the password. Let's add the value, which is going to be password. And now the on change event, which is going to be an event anonymous function and set password and add here the event dot target dot value not but value okay now on the form when you click to the button i'm going to say here uh, on submit let's call the handle login i'm going to create a handle login method so let's come up here and create this method i'm going to copy and create a constant and say and the login which is going to be equal with an and it's going to be an async function here we receive the event and the first thing i'm going to call event dot prevent default so we are not going to reload because we are in the front in the single page application we don't need to reload the, the browser and now let's use uh, the axios we have installed the axios in the first uh, project i think in the first video yeah here we have axios so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a new file or let's create a new folder here i'm going to name it api and in this folder new file i'm going to name it axios.js and here i'm going to import the axios and add base url and so with credentials to be true so let's say uh, import axios from axios and let's export default axios dot create and here add an object with base url which is going to be the backend url so this one i'm going to copy this and paste it here just remove the slash and also with credentials to be true and now we are going to use this uh, access we are going to import the access from from that file so let's come here and let's say import axios but not from axios here but from uh, the file we created in here so we need to go up and slash api slash axios okay now let's make the logic send the post request to the slash login with the email and the password and i'm going to use try and catch to catch also the errors so i'm going to say try and then catch any error if we have error like this okay now in the try i'm going to say because we have an async function i'm going to say here and let me close this await and axios dot post slash login because the base url is the backend so we added the base url here localhost 8000 and now we need to just add the slash login here and then an object with the email and the password we have here and if we have a for example in the backend some other name we need to add it here so for example user email in the backend 
if we have something like this, we need to add something like this here. So this is going to be for the backend and this is for the, the variable we have. But because in the backend we have the same, I'm going to remove that. Okay, then if everything is okay, I'm going to return to the home page. So for that, we need to use the navigate and let's import that from the reactor router DOM. So I'm going to say use navigate and let's define that use that navigate here. So I'm going to create a constant and say navigate is going to be equal with the use navigate. And then if everything is okay, first I'm going to set the email again to an empty string. Also set the password to an empty string and then navigate to the slash homepage. If we have any error for now, I'm going to say just console.log the error. Okay, and let's see in the backend, in the browser now. As you can see here, we have the Laravel session. I'm going to clear and refresh. In the front end, let's inspect also here go to the application and let's refresh also here okay let's add and we have the test example dot com and the password is password and i'm going to zoom it out okay let's go to the console and see is if everything is okay click login and we see here access error request filed with the status code 419 to post the login. Okay. Now let's go get the application and here clear this Laravel session. Come here and clear again. And let's refresh. Come here and let's refresh. So we have the CSRF token here, as you can see, and test again now. Let's say test example.com and add the password. And let's say login. And now we redirected back to the home page, as you can see. And if we see the network, we have a login method post with 204, no content. So that is returning from the backend, no content. So everything works okay. Go to the console, yeah. So we have a success login. And if we go to the login also, we have an empty email and the password. Okay, friends, so that's it about this video. So if you have again the error, with the CSRF token, make sure you, when we refresh in the front end, we have in the cookies the CSRF token and also the Laravel session. So, first go in the back end and clear here and say refresh, and then go in the front end, clear and refresh. And when we, when you get that. So you can see maybe sometimes yeah now we have and when you have in the front end the csrf token and the laravel session then you are okay so for this video we are okay we have a success login and see you in the next one all the best thank you very much